It's an imperfect example of how the races of Kryn can live in relative peace and work together. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the Confederation of Armok and Talidas. I would like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel, and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. I am referencing the Time of the Dragon box set for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. The Confederation of Armok is not a government that sprang up out of peace and unity, but it was a hard-fought collaboration that defined a region of Southern Hosk and Talidas unlike anything else. Its history is one of refugees squatting and claiming land that was already populated. This is the tradition of elves, but what came out of it was a form of government that, if used on Ancelon, I believe would have prevented the dragon armies from driving the elves out of their homeland and the Minotaur nation from claiming their forest. You see, the elves of Armok were originally from Ancelon. The elven Great Armado was sailing around Ancelon looking for suitable locations to claim his home, and a great storm struck them. Many ships were blown off course and lost, and several ships were sunk after running into Talidas' rocky cliffs. It wasn't until an adrift fisherman happened to come across the remaining elven ships that they were rescued, being shown the secret ways through the treacherous shaols of the outer banks in order to reach the Bay of Hur. Once safely on shore, the Sylvanes asked for the blessing of the land spirits and named the area Armok, which means dry land in Sylvanesty. Armok was previously occupied, however, but the Sylvanes didn't consider it so, as the native peoples were primitive human barbarian tribes. The better equipped elves easily drove out the tribes from their land, and though the skirmishes were easy initially, the ousted tribes united and created a more challenging front line for the elven borders. Reaching the extent of defensible land, the elves stopped their expanse, and the remaining tribes began fighting amongst themselves. Some turned to the Sylvanes for treaty and protection, laying the groundwork for the Confederation of Armok. The Confederation is formed between sixteen tribes, and though the races of elves and humans make up the bulk of the Confederation, it's also populated with Nomoi, Merak, Kender, and Centaurs. As one might expect, the culture of the tribal humans was heavily influenced by the Sylvanes, and their cultures appropriated much from one another. The elves easily claimed the status of the ruling class, and with the exception of the four edicts, or laws, they ruled relatively fairly over the confederation. The Sylvanes themselves are divided into two factions, the Nestiromal, the people workers, and the Neskigir, the robed people basically your blue and white collar cultures. The human tribes were very class-based, with no real opportunities for advancement or changing of your social class. However, the elves saw talent as outside any social class structure and created a system to allow those of merit to rise through the class structures of the humans. Aside from this system, the Confederation does not interfere with the internal affairs of any of the individual tribes. And because of this, Uncouth traditions remain, like various forms of slavery, for example. The confederations can't raise an army independent from the tribe's own armies as well, and this ensures the sovereignty and preservation of each tribe's security and culture. There is a magisterial council that convenes to hear disputes, however, and it's composed of members from the various tribes, though the elves take care to ensure they have majority control either through direct or indirect political pressure and influence. The elves, again, were not always so magnanimous to the tribes, and their first edicts represent that. These are their four laws that, much like the Salamnic's Oath and the Measure, have historically confined the Sylvanes, but have been extrapolated on after their creation. The first is that the Armok Nesti, the land controlled by the Sylvanes, is theirs alone. Anyone entering this sacred land is punished by death. The second is that no Hierakil, or the outsider, may have relations with a Sylvanes, punishable by exile for the Sylvanae if they are a willing participant, and if not, the Hierakil is killed by the state. 
The third is that the Hierakil cannot bring suit against any Sylvanae for the taking of their property. Eminent domain is always on the side of the elves. And lastly, the Hierakil may never be a captain of a vessel that leaves the outer Sheols or a leader of troops. The elves must always be in command of any and all confederation forces. Ultimately, the first edicts were crafted to maintain elven control and could easily be abused, but as time passed, the laws were interpreted so as to not be dictatorial over the other tribes. Armok Nesti, the dry land of the people, lies between the New Mountains and the Bay of Hur. The Sylvanes did try to recreate Sylvanesti, referring to it as the land not to be forgotten, and at its heart was New Sylvanost, but they just couldn't recapture the majesty of their homeland and abandoned the attempt, leaving sparsely populated ruins. Though the elves live in harmony with the land, creating minor preserves for their homesteads, there are still remnant blighted areas left over from its original inhabitants. These old villages still contain unavenged spirits that are known to roam in the dark of night in the absence of the moons. The Sylvanes will create thousands of lights and fires all around Armok Nesti to protect themselves from these quiet terrors. Their borders are fiercely guarded, and any caught are bound and delivered to the Night Protector, the guardian of the Armok Nesti, who passes judgment. There are a number of religions that exist in the Confederation. The elves, being very self-sufficient, never relied on the gods as much as the other races, so in their absence, not much changed. It's much like modern Christians who go to church on Sunday, not because they necessarily believe in it, but because it's family tradition. There are a few new cults that have emerged and flourish among the elves, however. The first is the cult of the Sea Lord. Seeing as how they were saved by the sea as they come to see it, they worship in the name of the Sea Lord and practice devoutly if they make their living on or near the sea. The second is the cult of Ildemar the Earth Spirit. Again, due to their saving grace of finding land after being lost at sea, they discovered Miss Laxa, who sought to ease their suffering and appeared in the guise of Ildemar, who granted them the power of healing and wisdom. They are not unlike vegans in their behaviors and dress restrictions. They are fervent in their beliefs and go to great lengths, like most radical environmentalists, to sabotage hunters and industrialists who cut down trees or disrupt ecosystems. The last major cult is the forbidden cult of Usa the Mighty, which is in truth Hite, the merchant in disguise. This is popular among the human tribes who attempt to unite the kingdoms of the Confederation with neighboring Thanal and the League under the Grand Holy Knight of the Cult. You can imagine that political thriller-styled campaigns would work wonderfully in the Confederation of Armok, in addition to using the area as a rational buffer between Thanal and the League, who are in their own rights quite dictatorial and nationalist. The more I dive into the cultures and governments of Talitas, the more I find myself genuinely loving Dragonlance. It is the perfect continental offset to Anselon, which is itself filled with a myriad of cultures and nations. But they are just different enough in themselves to feel truly original and fresh. If you're looking to add elven locations that are not overtly arrogant, nationalist, and bigoted like the elves of Anselon in your campaigns, look no further than the Sylvanes of the Confederation of Armok wherein there is enough diversity of race and culture to cater to any creative Dungeon Master's designs. But that is all the time I have to talk about the Confederation of Armok. I hope you enjoyed the information. Do you use political intrigue or government strife in your campaigns? Were you aware of the Confederation of Armok? And finally, are the Sylvanese Corti the best of the elves on Ancelon? Leave a comment below. I'd like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching, this has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember... I'll pack my tears away for today. The gods know that they'll be here tomorrow. As for the aching in my heart, it will be here always.